And now it's time for us to discuss more of these headlines and simple keywords with Adam joining us via Zoom. Good morning, Adam. Good morning, Lena. Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday to you too. The stocks look good yesterday, better than the day before, certainly. And it did. Today is Ichu as well. Uh, yeah. I, technically, yeah. it is the beginning of autumn. But as I say that out loud, <laughs> it, it just doesn't feel right, does it? It does it because we're <laughs> still in the peak of summer in terms of weather. <laughs> All right. I mean, technically, it's, it was made for designed for agricultural calendars but even that has changed yeah. times have changed climates have changed so how about that yeah these kind of dates signifying starts of certain seasons they're kind of uh not really relevant anymore i guess because you know <laughs> a lot of uh the climate is certainly changing year mm. by year mm. Mm. maybe we need to revisit how we name these yeah. days but nonetheless yeah, maybe. Have be to you too. <laughs> Happy to you. Hopefully it'll cool down soon. All right, let's get started. Korea's stock market did rebound sharply after a record plunge on Monday. This is our first keyword of the day. Stocks rebound. So the Kospi has rebounded over 3%, rebounding from the previous day's crash caused by fears of a U.S. recession. Uh, it also follows a rebound on Wall Street, but that's not the end of it because the market must keep watch on economics data out of U.S. Fed's rate cut, for example, the value of the yen. Those are just some of the things that hang in the balance. But what's the latest, Adam? Right, so the benchmark cost fee index uh, closed at 25.22. That's up uh, just over 80 points or 3.3%. It marked a turnaround from a whopping near 9% crash on Monday. Now, the COSDAQ also surged, rising 6%, regaining the 700 point mark. Now, both indices saw their largest gains since November 6th of last year, with the cost fee achieving its 14th highest single day increase ever. Uh, individual investors, interestingly, led the upturn, especially in the cost base, scooping up a net 451.8 billion won. Foreigners actually dumped a net 193 billion won and institutions sold a net 322, uh, 20 .9 billion won. Now, major stocks across the board mostly rose by sector. All industries except telecommunications rose with healthcare, chemicals and machinery uh, leading the gains. A lot of blue chip uh, stocks also um, increased significantly as well. Now, the rise was attributed to a bargain hunting by investors who saw the market as oversold, especially after that collapse on Monday. Now, data also showed that the U.S. services sector activity uh, rebounded from a four year low in July, helping relieve fears of a U.S. recession. However, it's uncertain if this is a short-term rebound or a trend reversal, whether we are certainly going into a bullish market. Now, analysts suggest that further support is needed from company earnings, currency stabili uh, stabilization, and favorable export and inflation data, especially from China. Uh, President Yu, meanwhile, has instructed the government to take swift and preemptive responses to heightened volatility um, in the financial markets. He was basically... Um, responding to kind of some sort of criticisms uh, that he was taking uh, time off, uh, going on his vacation, while there is certainly some volatility in the financial markets. Uh, but he uh, came out with that response, saying he is uh, being briefed and is on top of things. All right, we'll wait and see. But for now, uh, Korean stocks are performing stronger than Monday's record fall. Let's move on to our second keyword of the day. E-commerce support. So government will begin offering liquidity support to vendors affected by the recent payment delays of Timon and We Make Price. But because it seems that what they're offering for now are low interest loans, there's also a victims group that has formed that are not too happy with the arrangements. Right. So, yeah, of course, um, this was uh, in the making because the government did pledge to right. kind of provide some sort of support to these vendors and consumers alike. Now, the government will provide liquidity of some 500 billion won. Uh, starting Friday, the Industrial Bank of Korea and the Korea Credit Guarantee Fund will launch a support program with over 300 billion won available. Now, to apply for credit guarantees, companies can go to the uh, CODIT branches. Now, after a uh, guarantee review, the IBK will provide loans. Now, these loans will have interest rates between 3.9% and 4.5%, which is 
more than one percentage point lower than typical SME loans offering maximum preferential rates. Now, an additional 200 billion won in low interest loans will also be offered to small businesses facing uh, payment delays starting Friday. Uh, such businesses may also apply for an up to a one year extension on their existing loans beginning today. Uh, any company with sales from May onward during the payment delay period is eligible. Finance uh, Minister Che sang Mok has promised a wide range of regulation reforms to prevent a recurrence of such payment delays. The government will seek to revise related regulations to reduce the amount of time, for example, allowed to allow for uh, delayed payments by e-commerce platforms. Mm. Also, those that issue prepaid e-coupons and gift cards will be required to maintain 100% of their issued amount, a move aimed at enabling uh, immediate and full refunds when necessary. That comes after uh, these e-commerce uh, platforms were giving out these uh, e-coupons and gift cards without having the money to back them up. So, yeah, there was some criticism there, but it also begs the question, well, if these companies have the money to cover 100% of these gift cards and coupons, well, they can't they just give it out in cash in the first place? But uh, <laughs> yeah, but, uh, that's, uh, that's one, uh, some of the, the, the kind of the um, support measures that are being announced by the government. All right. Questions remain, but at least that's the latest uh, when it comes to government relief with the e-commerce liquidity crisis. Uh, let's move on to our third keyword of the day. Foreign workers. So 100 Filipino domestic workers participating in a pilot project to supply foreign workers to Korean households have arrived in the country, all laden in blue blazers. Their arrival is part of government efforts to help counter the nation's plunging birth rate, provide help, as sort of a nanny housekeeper program, if you will. Yeah, so that blue color was chosen because it's the kind of national color of the Philippines. Uh, I wouldn't say they were blazers, more like um, windbreakers. They, blazers? I think. they look like blazers, they blazers to me. <laughs> Did they? Uh, I apologize. I will, maybe I, I will double okay. check. I maybe saw the wrong thing. But anyway, that's not important. Uh, <laughs> it's basically, this plan is in response to a decreasing number of domestic workers, of course, due to an aging society and the rising costs of child care. Uh, Seoul City and the government have introduced foreign caregivers for the first time to try and um, solve these problems. They have all completed 780 hours of training at a job training center in the Philippines and obtained government certification. Uh, they will also undergo specialized training here for four weeks before they do start their work. They will begin providing child care and domestic services in various uh, Seoul households for six months, starting on the 3rd of next month. Uh, they are fluent in English and can communicate in Korea too. At a certain level, they also passed health checks and background checks for drug and criminal records. Some of the workers have expressed high expectations for cultural experiences and financial opportunities here in Korea. They are also optimistic about their new roles in Korean homes. A number of them were interviewed by reporters upon their arrival at Incheon mm -hmm. Airport. Uh, this is the first time that foreign participants in this pilot project have entered the country. Uh, the service is available to Seoul households with children under 12 or expecting a child, regardless of income. Now, the city plans to prioritize, though, households with uh, single parents, multiple children, working parents or pregnant women. Uh, the selection process will also consider the children's ages and desired service duration. Uh, Seoul residents using the service must pay a minimum wage of 9,861 per hour. Uh, that amounts to households paying about 1.19 million won per month for four hours a day and 2.38 million won for eight hours. Um, there are still some controversies and concerns, though, particularly regarding the scope of their duties as well. Does it include... Um, Maintaining the cooking, home, for example, uh, and cooking. Yeah, yeah, cooking for adults, uh, uh, but it does include doing the dishes and... Uh, yeah, just a lot of household chores that are being um, disputed at the moment in terms of what they are supposed to be doing and the scope of their uh, roles. So mm. we'll have to see. Uh, it is a pilot project, so the government will be assessing the kind of effectiveness of it. And if it works out well uh, and the re uh, re reactions and response is positive, then 
of course, uh, the government will be refining it more and making it more widespread. I mean, let's be honest. I mean, type in nannies versus housekeepers online. You came across a lot of these threads in many languages. Where does a duty stop for a nanny as opposed to a housekeeper? So it's not the first time we've had something similar. But because it is a pilot project that's important for the government, we will keep clo mm. uh, close tabs on it. And you were right. I stand corrected. Blue windbreakers it is. Do you sometimes <laughs> see what you want to see? I <laughs> yeah. <Okay. laughs> Turn it into a fashion item. Apparently, I like blazers. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But correction there. All right, let's move on to our fourth keyword of the day. Medical revision. So the government has stressed that despite the half-year vacancy of medical residents, it is possible to transition to a specialist center structure in advanced general hospitals. What does this mean and what's the plan? Right, so the plan is basically to make these hospitals uh, kind of central hubs for regional medical cooperation. Now, to reduce reliance on medical residents, the government plans to set a standard for the number of patients per resident. Uh, however, the Korea Medical Association criticized the government, saying it offers temporary fixes without addressing the root causes uh, of the resident shortage. Of course, a lot of residents now are on strike in protest of the government's planned medical school quota hike. But, now, but the government says by focusing on treating severe cases and restructuring to emphasize specialist roles, hospitals can reduce their dependence on residents. It has vowed to support hospital training programs and processes to make this transition smoother. This involves setting up a network of more than 10 affiliated hospitals to support uh, the restructuring uh, efforts. The existing uh, referral system will also be refer uh, reformed to allow more active patient transfers, ensuring priority treatment and a fast track system for urgent cases. Of course, a lot of patients usually go to their neighborhood clinic first and get a diagnosis. And if it uh, requires further and more sophisticated treatment than they go to these general or mm. bigger hospitals. So and that's what the referral system is um, referring to. Now, the government plans to change the training system to decrease reliance on residents as well. A standard for the number of patients per resident will also be established. Now, to encourage proper use of medical services, uh, the government will also reassess cost structures as well. The government also mentioned the possibility of increasing costs for patients who misuse services at advanced hospitals and suggested discussions with patients and consumer groups as well as medical groups as well. We'll have to see how um, on board these medical groups will be considering their opposition to the plan. Mm -hmm. uh, and the government plans to start uh, trial projects uh, next month. So again, we'll have to see how well uh, this plays out. But the whole idea is basically to reduce dependency on these residents because there's simply a shortage of them and basically to try and support these major, bigger hospitals um, in terms of this, uh, in, uh, in relation to the staff shortage that they're suffering from at the moment. Mm. All right, with that, we turn our attention to the U.S. presidential election. The race is down to the last wire. We have three months until the November election, and it seems that the vice president has chosen her running mate. Our fifth keyword of the day. Harris's running mate. So Vice President and the Democratic presidential candidate Kamala Harris has named uh, Tim Walz, the governor of Minnesota, as a running mate ahead of the November election. And let's be honest, unless you are living in the United States or paying attention to American election, you don't know who Walz is. <laughs> let's get everyone caught up. <laughs> That's certainly do. Now, Harris will introduce her new running mate at a rally in Philadelphia, which is actually happening shortly. Now, she praised Walz's accomplishments, uh, stating as a governor, uh, coach, teacher and veteran, he has delivered results for working families. Before his uh, role in politics, he was a school teacher and also a coach as well. American now, football also, coach. American football. I hesitate to say the phrase, but anyway, <laughs> American football coach. Now, Walls also expressed his uh, gratitude uh, on X, uh, formerly known as Twitter. He has also served, uh, sorry, he has served as governor of Minnesota uh, since 2019, he is recognized as a progressive politician with a focus on working class and labor friendly policies. He is also known for articulating democratic priorities like gun control and public education. Now, the Harris campaign will be hoping Walz's plain spoken and kind of small town Midwestern demeanor could appeal to independent and conservative voters, especially mm -hmm. 
in the Midwest is uh, swing states like Wisconsin and Michigan, where the Democrats typically struggle. So he has kind of a mindset of a progressive um, uh, liberal, but he has the demeanor that can appeal maybe to moderates and uh, conservatives. Mm-hmm. Now, Walls gains national attention, actually, for his strategy of calling Trump and his running mate, uh, J.D. Vance, quote unquote, weird. This is a phrase that Harris has been kind of using to talk about her arrival and it's being adopted a lot by the Democratic Party as well to describe their rivals in the Republican Party. Now, Walz's nomination is seen as an effective counter also to the Republicans' choice of J.D. Vance, mm. uh, kind of ranks the richest candidate uh, from the Rust Belt um, as well. So, mm. yeah, there's been a lot of contenders maybe uh, for the running mate for Harris, but uh, yeah, Walz has been the uh, pick. Uh, Trump, of course, uh, wrote uh, on social media as well, simply, quote unquote, thank you, kind of seemingly mm. uh, confident of his chances against uh, both uh, the uh, both the vice president and Waltz in the in the run up to the election in November. All right. So Waltz did have a, a set of really competitive contenders. It seems that his straight talking style also works out in his advantage, like you said, sort of labeling Trump and J.D. Vance, quote unquote, weird. Now, we can have a whole conversation on why that is important in American politics. Labels, demeanors, yeah. things like that. <laughs> but we're yeah. out of time. So for now, Kamala Harris has her running mate. She'll announce it, uh, make the announcement officially, I believe, in Philadelphia on Tuesday evening, local time. Thanks, Adam. <laughs> You're very welcome. Sorry. I, thought you were I was broke. done. <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought, uh, I thought there was a bit of a breakup at the moment uh, for a moment there. But uh, yes, uh, you're very welcome. I'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. If you're listening to our program using the podcast service, just a reminder that we do go live Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. Korea Standard Time. So tune in and help us make the show more informative by giving us your input. See you bright and early on Good Morning Seoul.